How do you too, Bunky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, another exciting, semi-exciting, mildly exciting day at Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, oh, as I reach off camera, we're going to uh, play around with this HP Thin Client. Um, you can get these things on eBay for about 30 bucks, including shipping. Uh, this one happens to be a model uh, 610 not the 610 plus uh but it's a you know it's a pretty powerful unit uh let me uh, show you the specs on the screen so as you can see it is a virtual powerhouse actually no i'm being facetious it's an amd t56n dual core processor runs at about 1.6 gigahertz uh, the particular unit i have has 16 gig of flash memory now that is a actual serial ATA flash card. It's not an IDE like uh, the older model of uh, Thin Clients at Dell, Maids, Dell Made. It has a uh, 4 gig of onboard RAM, so more than enough. Uh, Radeon HD6320. It has a 10 100 1000 nit card, 4 USB 2 ports, one or 2 USB 3s, serial parallel, PS2, uh, is DVI and DisplayPort adapters, it uh, takes 19.5 volts and consumes 20 watts when running. So not a real powerhouse, but you know what that makes for. This, what would this machine be perfect for? That makes this machine perfect for running free PBX. How about it? All right, let's go over to the bench, and I'm going to uh, disassemble it and show you uh, the guts on the inside. And then we're going to try and do a free PBX install on this. So let's go over to the bench right now. So here's the unit. Uh, it's nothing spectacular about it. Uh, it does have a little tag on the back that gives you all the information on it from HP, etc. Disassembly on this is very simple. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but it says uh, push to unlock. So basically what you do is you push, slide this in toward you, and then the end piece comes off. And let's see here. Then the top cover just slides off and up like that. Same way with the bottom cover, it slips up and off. And then you're left with this nice little metal chassis. All right. Now, go ahead and take that out. It lifts up, it doesn't slide. So if you lift it up, in here you'll have your RAM module. That's a 4 gig RAM module. I could put another 4 gig in. Uh, you, this unit can accommodate up to 16 gig of RAM. But for a phone system, 4 gig is going to be just fine. So I'll go ahead and put this one back on. And it just snaps into place. And then we come to the front cover, and I believe the front cover just slides... Oh, hold on. If you see this here, you see that latch right there? Even an arrow that tells you, you just flip the latch and off comes the cover. So the CPU, the video are all under these two heat sinks here. Uh, and then it has a heat pipe going to a, uh, a, a transfer unit. Here is the uh, SSD. You can see it's, a tr it's an SSD slot. This is the uh, 16 gig SSD hard drive that they put in there. Uh, and you also have room, if you see here is another serial ATA connector right here. So you could actually mount an actual serial ATA hard drive in there. Uh, the other thing uh, of note is it has a little small mini IDE connector in there if you were to use an IDE drive. This is your wireless network card here. This is your battery, and then it even has a small PCI expansion, uh, PCI Express expansion slot that is not used on this model. Uh, the 610 Plus has a wider case. So that's what the inside of this unit looks like. Here's the front of it. You have microphone, headphone jack, two USB 2 ports, a power switch. You have DIN connectors, power connector serial connector, two USB 3 ports, you can see they're in blue, two USB 2, 10 100 1000 nit card, display port adapter, and a DVI port. And that's basically all there is to these little units. 
So the first thing you want to do is, of course, download the free PBX. I have the uh, Sangoma, as you can see, Sangoma free PBX 64-bit 1805.1. You will need to use a program called Whisk. Win, Whisk? Yeah, Win32 Disk Imager. I have version 1.0. Now, I'm assuming you can use uh, uh, Rufus with this as well, if that were your choice, but the instructions tell you to use uh, Win32 Disk Imager, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is select my device that I'm going to create the uh, thumb drive on, and that is my H drive. And right now, this is an old Linux Mint install USB. Uh, it's a 4 gig. I'm just going to use it again. And I believe I can just drag. Nope, can't drag the image file over. I have to click the open, go to my desktop, and then I should see the... Where are you? That's funny. I don't see it on my desktop at all. Ah, because it's, it's looking for an IMG file, and I'm using an ISO. So there it is. Click on open and click on write and it's going to give us a warning that it's going to overwrite the target device make sure that's your correct target device you don't want to overwrite your hard drive or uh, some uh, SD drive or something like that so verify tell it yes we'll let it run it's going to take about three minutes to uh, format this thing we'll come back when it's done all right so our write was successful we'll click OK click on exit Let's go to File Explorer and see if it actually... Nope, doesn't see a drive at all. Not at all. That's okay. All right, so let's uh, eject the USB key. And it doesn't even show it, so I should just be able to take that thing out. There it went. And now we'll move over to the unit. All right, so on these HP Thin Clients, to get into the BIOS, you press the F10 key. Uh, while it's booting. So let's just go over some of the settings right now because I noticed when I was playing around with this it puts the BIOS in UEFI mode and um, I'm wondering if I can just do a default setup if that will break anything. So we're going to go ahead and try a default setup. Uh, I'm going to restore factory settings as default. Okay, just like doing a, you know, on a, on a standard BIOS. So let's go into system information. We can see it's an HP T610 WW, AMD processor, uh, 4 gig of RAM, DDR3. A, uh, it does not show the hard drive on here, but that's okay. Let's go over to device configuration. You can see it shows we have a 16 gig USB, I'm sorry, serial ATA flash drive and a 4 gig USB drive. That's one we're going to be booting off of. Let's go to storage options. Uh, the serial ATA drive is in HCI mode. That's good. Boot order. So it's going to boot a USB floppy drive uh, in EFI uh, or it'll boot in uh, legacy. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to see is if I could put make sure it's in um, BIOS mode instead of uh, UEFI. Well, I'm going to save changes and exit. And then I'm going to hold or I'll press the F9 key. Oh, yes, please. And I'm going to press the F9 key repeatedly to bring up the boot menu. All right. Oh, so there's my choices. So I'm going to boot in legacy mode with the serial, uh, the uh, sand disk. So we're gonna hit the enter and fingers crossed, hopefully it'll boot. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna do a free PBX 14 install with asterisk 13, hit enter. We're gonna output to VGA, enter. And we're gonna do a standard install. Uh, let's see, uh, okay. Fingers crossed here, folks. Now, I have yet to see any videos on YouTube about actually putting free, B free PBX on a device like this, so it'd be interesting to see if this works. So that's a good sign. We're up to the installation screen. 
So it's going to use local media. Uh, uh, custom partitioning is selected. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, and it's moving on to do the installation now. What I need to do is set the root password. So I'm going to click on there and we're going to enter our super secret password. And we're going to enter it twice. Now anytime you use a weak password, I believe it's going to make you click on done twice. Yes. So you have to click on done twice. All right, so that's a good, that's a really good sign. It's installing. Uh, this is going to take uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, I imagine, on this uh, slow of a machine. So we'll come back once the install is completed and show you what it looks like on the screen. All right, well, according to the installer, it's ready to reboot. All told, that took about, uh, about half an hour, what, half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. So not real fast, but then we don't expect speed out of an old unit like this. Uh, it's probably running about 90, 95 degrees. Well, maybe a little bit more than that because it's warmer than my hand, but uh, keep in mind there's no fans on this unit. It's all with passive cooling. So it tells me to reboot. I'm going to go ahead and click on reboot. Now I'm going to be ready with the F9 key uh, because I don't want it to boot off the USB. I want it to boot off the internal hard drive. So I'm pressing the F9 key so that it comes into my boot menu. And now this time I want it to boot off the Serial ATA 1 hard drive. Uh, let's see if it works. It looks like it's trying to boot. That's good. It'll automatically go into it. Now, of course, I've set up free PBX in a virtual machine before, but uh, any VOIP system is really time sensitive and when you add another layer on top of the hypervisor you can have problems with call quality that's why I'm interested in making a physical machine to install this onto so I'm going to go ahead and log in as root And we'll enter our super secret password. It's definitely not a screaming machine, that's for damn sure. You can see how long the login's taking. But, you know, uh, how often do you reboot your PBX system? Shouldn't be that often. Well, there you see we're up and running now. It's given us an IP address on our network of 5.71. We'll be making uh, changes on that, but uh, there's our proof of concept. It's up and running and installed on a mini uh, thin client. And uh, so we're putting a $30 computer back to good use. So, sorry for the uh, end of that video there. There was some uh, trouble with the camera auto focusing on the screen. And I have a dimwit for a cameraman. Actually, no, I was being assisted by my business partner. So it's all his fault that the camera didn't focus. But basically, the machine booted up into free PBX as I hoped it would uh, and uh, as you can see here in just a moment I will be showing you uh, what it looks like voila free PBX 14.0.3 comma or 3.1 so uh, if we go into reports we can get asterisk info the interface appears to be uh, plenty snappy, etc. Uh, I don't know how to get uh, any information on the system. Let's go to system admin. Maybe it'll tell us what there is there. I haven't activated it, so I don't, you know, I don't have that capability. And I don't think there's any other other than asterisk info. Yeah, I really don't see anything where I can show you that what the specs on that machine are but we already covered that so but there we go proof of concept it is up and running and uh, now the next phase will be to see if we can configure it get some extensions registered get some trunks registered and get this son of a gun to take some calls for us so as you can see from this video these old uh, and you can see the thing behind me sitting on top of the server 
Uh, these old thin uh, client PCs from HP have some life left in them after all. Now there's no reason why this unit of this size could not handle a plethora of phone calls and users. It's got a lot of RAM in there. It's got 4 gig of RAM. The 16 gig uh, serial ATA uh, whatever drive that is, you know, uh, flash drive. Uh, it's an older technology and it is slower, but it, it gets a job done. But, you know, I would imagine we could put a uh, an SSD or even a laptop drive in there and get the get a little bit better performance out of that unit and get a little more storage space. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to prove to you that in its current state, I could get it up and running and get it working. So this is part one of this video. We've got it up and running now. Now the next deal will be to go out and configure that. And I'm going to do a whole video on free PBX configuration. Now what that video is going to include is me setting up extensions, me setting up the phone system, some tweaks and settings you really need to be aware of if you're going to use free PBX successfully, how to register your VOIP providers, trunk line, how to do incoming and outgoing routes, that kind of thing. So I don't know that that's going to all going to be one video or several of them, but I, I promised months ago I would do a video on free PBX and that's what I intend to do. So stay tuned for those. So there you go. They didn't say it couldn't be done and I didn't do it or did I? Yeah, I did. It's up and running. So like I said, in the next series of videos, we'll cover more stuff. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative and maybe even a little bit funny. Not that kind of funny, you know, ha ha funny. Be sure to smash that like button. Leave your comments in the comments section. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, if you like our content. And we take PayPal and Patreon for those of you generous enough to donate. Please don't forget that we will see you on the other side.